Hi, and welcome to the DROPRO segment on installing a digital readout kit onto a milling machine. This video is the first of a four-part series, and in this first video, we show you how to quickly measure your mill's travel, and then we examine all the parts and pieces that come as part of your magnetic scale kit. In part two, we install the x-axis scale. In part three, we install the y-axis scale. And finally, in part four, we install the display head and then go through all the initial steps necessary to get the kit up and running. All right, so let's get going. Now, today's installation involves mounting a DROPRO's two-axis electronica magnetic scale kit onto a very popular benchtop mill. Now, in the past, mounting scales onto a mill was a difficult, time-consuming process. But because our new magnetic scales are a fraction the size of either traditional glass or inductive ball scales, and a whole lot simpler to mount, we're going to be finished in a fraction of the time it used to take us before. So let's go ahead and take a look at our milling machine and see exactly what I'm talking about. We'll start with the x-axis, or the side-to-side -side axis first. For the x-axis, we typically mount the scale to the back of the table and the reed head to the saddle of the machine, centered and below the scale. So let's turn the mill around and take a better look at how that's actually going to work. So we're now looking at the back side of the table, and on this flat surface here is where the scale typically mounts and we can see that we have a nice smooth machine surface. As for the reed head, it typically mounts below the scale to the saddle right about here. Now, for most mills, mounting the x-axis scale is not much of an issue because not only is the scale easy to mount, but by being out of the way on the back of the table, it decreases the chances of damage due to drop tools or parts. All right. So next, let's take a look at where we'll be mounting the y-axis scale. Now, over here on the right side of the mill, we can see that the table lock and the jib adjusting screws are right here in the way of where we would want to mount the y-axis scale. Plus, the casting on the right side of the mill is angled to accommodate the z-axis handwheel assembly. So let's take a look at the left side of the mill instead. And over here on the left side, I see exactly what I'm looking for. This whole side of the base is bare and there's nothing to interfere with mounting the scale or the reed head. Now, mounting the y-axis is exactly the opposite to that of mounting the x-axis. That's because the x-axis scale moves back and forth with the table while the x-axis reed head is held stationary on the saddle. But for the y-axis, it's the exact opposite. For the y-axis, we're going to mount the scale to the base of the machine, and it remains stationary. But the y-axis reed head will be mounted on the underside of the table, and it follows the table movement as the table moves to the front or to the rear. Now, of course, it really doesn't make a difference whether it's a scale or the reed head that moves. And while similar, your installation will probably be slightly different than ours. As long as one piece moves and the other remains stationary is all that really matters. Next, we need to figure out how far our mill travels to make sure that we get a kit with enough scale travel for our machine. First, we'll measure the x-axis travel. We'll start by moving the table to the far left stop. And then we'll make a mark between the table and the saddle. Next, we'll move the table to the far right side stop. And then we'll measure between the two marks. And we can see that the total x-axis travel is around 13 and a half inches. 
Now for the y-axis travel, we first need to run the table all the way to the front. And then we make a mark between the saddle and the base of the machine. Next, we move the table all the way to the back of the machine. And then, just like before, we measure between the two split marks. And so it looks like we've got a y-axis travel just short of about five and three-quarter inches. So to summarize, we need a mill kit that has travels of at least five and three-quarter inches for the y-axis and 13 and a half inches for the x-axis. Now, the smallest magnetic mill kit that DROPROS currently offers is a 10 by 20 inch mill kit, which is fine because if we have to, we can easily shorten or cut the magnetic scales to exactly the length we need. Remember, with magnetic kits, all we really need to be concerned about is that the travels of the kit exceed the travels of our machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a 10 by 20 inch mill kit. All right, so here's a 10 by 20 inch mill kit. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see exactly what we've got. So the first thing that we see here is the foam protective pad. We'll take that and move that out of the way. Here we have the installation instructions. Here's a bag with the operator's manual and the power cord. And here we have a couple of the scale boxes. Now this box here is labeled as a 270 millimeter length scale, so it would be the 10 inch scale or the y-axis scale. And this box here is labeled as a 520 millimeter length scale, so this would be the 20 inch scale or the x-axis scale. Now over here on the other side of the box, we have the display box. And we'll go ahead and set this to the side. And then over here on this side of the box, we have a couple different miscellaneous boxes. These are the installation brackets. Go ahead and set these over here. Here is the single arm stand, and this would be for mounting the display head to the side of the machine. And finally, the last box is just a dummy box or a packing box for the main box. So that's all the boxes inside the box. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. All right, so we've reorganized the table here a little bit. We've gotten rid of the main packing box. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the bracket boxes. The first box here says simple mounting kit. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside this. And take that out. And we can see here, this would be the bracket that's going to hold the x-axis reed head and the nuts and bolts to install that. And you can also see here in the package of hardware, there are some grub screws that are used to tilt or level this bracket. 
Now, the second box over here is labeled Universal Mounting Kit. So let's go ahead and open it up. And here in this box, we can see that we have two 90 degree brackets. And these will be used to mount the Y-axis reed head to the side or underneath the table. And if we open up the bag, you can see that we've got all the hardware to bolt everything together. And one other thing to notice is that the hardware here, or rather the brackets, uh, these are nice, they're machined, they're not just cast, but they're machined, they're true, they're also slotted here to clear the head of the bolt. So it's a really nice bracket kit. Okay, so moving on. This box back here, it says single arm stand. We'll open it up. A couple bags inside here. And this is the arm that will mount the display head to the machine. And this bag right here has a couple more bags inside of it, not too surprisingly. And we have a bracket that will hold the display arm and then all the hardware to secure the bracket to the side of the mill. All right, so let's move on to the display now and the display box and open that up. And inside you can see this is the EL400 two axis mill display. And you can see that it ships with a protective cover on it. So we've removed that. And I don't know whether the camera will pick this up or not, but there's a protective film on the front of this face on the front of the main display and also on the keyboard over here. So I don't know if the camera would pick that up, but uh, once you've installed the unit, then you'd remove both this protective film on both surfaces. Now, going back to the main box, there's also a, another bag over here underneath. I'll go ahead and open that up. And inside what we've got two plastic bags. One is the stud and the hardware to mount the display to the arm. And the second is a grounding kit for the display. All right, so now that we've got a general look at all the boxes, let's have a closer look at the 10 inch or the Y axis scale. And as we open up the box, we can see here that we have the scale cover. And here's a bag of mounting hardware. Here's the Y axis scale. And you can also see how thin that is and quite uh, well designed. And finally, here's the bag with the reed head and the cable. So let's go ahead and open up the first bag here. And the first thing that we see here is the calibration certificate for the scale. And then we also have some technical specifications and hints for mounting the scales. And then we also have some more hardware here. So let's go ahead and open these up. It's quite a plethora of bags here. Let's go ahead and dump this guy out. And here's an easy one to miss. In this small bag here, this is actually has the shim inside of it that's used for determining the mounting distance between the reed head and the scale. So you can see that this being a clear shim inside of a clear bag, you have to be careful when you take everything apart that you don't accidentally toss this out.
Okay, so that's the shim. Here's a plastic tie for securing the reed head cable. And these here are called P-clips and they're used for fastening or routing the reed head cable. And next we have four socket head screws here. Let's move that bag over. And the longer of these two screws is used to fasten the reed head to the reed head bracket. And then the shorter two cap screws are used to fasten the scale to the side of the machine. So next, let's have a closer look at the scale itself. And probably if you haven't seen one of these before, the first thing that you notice is how thin they are and extremely low profile. So let's go ahead and take a look at the reed head. The reed head will simply go on the top or glide along the top surface of the scale like this, back and forth. Now, you also might notice that there's a hash mark, a couple of hash marks on the side of the reed head and also some hash marks on the side of the scale. And these need to be coincidental, not, so, not per se on the same end, but on the same side. So this would be correct with these two hash marks here. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. There's a hash mark here and also a set of hash marks here. So this would be correct. Now in the last packet we took a look at, it says scale cover mounting hardware. And these would be for mounting the scale cover to the side of the machine. Now for the x-axis scale, it's going to be exactly identical, except for being just a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and leave the x scale in the box. So now that we've seen all of what's in the boxes, let's start by taking a look at how we're going to install the kit. We'll start by taking a look at how we'll install the x-axis. Mm -hmm. 